I'd like to do a quick recap and update on what's going on with the chain plates. I got them back from the machinist. You see them here in the box and then individually. It's rough 316 stainless so the first thing I did was to sand them down on a drill press with 80 and 100 grit sanding wheels. After that I moved to a lot more not aggressive sanding but a more stair-stepped approach going from 100, 200, 300 and 400 sandpaper here also doing that on the drill press and then after that I took them to the buffing wheels and did a, a coarse medium and fine buff and here we see the final product ready to go and be mounted on the boat I'd like to take a break here at the channel from all the action and ask you if you enjoy what you see here on the channel go ahead and hit that subscription button we'd really appreciate it also give us a thumbs up the positive feedback is always enjoyed this is my fuse block for all the incoming forms of power generation be that solar panel, wind turbine, or water turbine. Now one of the things I wanted to do was determine how many amps at any given time are being produced. So in order to do that, I needed to install a simple shunt, which you see here. Now here is the shunt getting ready to install. The thing that I liked about this particular shunt, like the other one that I installed for the secondary battery bank, is that this is Bluetooth, so it doesn't require me to mount or run any wires to the screen. So I can mount this over where my controllers are, and I can see a total for the energy going in. Here we see the shunt installed and up and running. Now, you're probably asking, why is there a negative 9.5 amps? Well, this is a battery shunt, and the means at which I have it wired up. That just means that there's nine and a half amps going into the battery. Just want to get some simple information and this is a cheap and easy way to do it. Do you remember from our last vlog, I had done the trial fit on the new Stern Teak Toe Rail. With that completed and ready to go in, it was time to move on to the permanent install. So it was installed with marine sealant, which you can see here, going in. So I mounted the four pieces of that stern rail and then put the wood bungs in. The next step, sanding. Now I used a palm sander and I started with 60 grit sandpaper, then moved to 120, and then finally on to 220. Here you can see the final product after all the sanding. With the sanding complete, it was time to brush off the big pieces of dust, get out the vacuum, and clean up the area. Next, I always wipe down my teak with acetone and then let it dry for an hour before I do anything else. After letting the acetone dry for about an hour, it's time to get out the blue tape and tape off the work area so we can get ready for finish. With the acetone dry and the area taped off, it's time to use West System Resin Epoxy with Special 207 Hardener. The 207 Hardener allows the epoxy to, to dry clear. It looks just like a varnish. I'm going to do three coats of that and it takes about four hours at least for it to dry in between each coat. So I'm going to go ahead and apply those and tune in next week and we'll see what the next steps are. I wanted to give a quick budget update here. If you haven't seen any of the preceding budget updates, let me just give you a quick outline here. If you look on here, anything that is indented to the left in red with an X in front of it or items that are all finished, so those will be the final price for each one of those items. For example, uh, take the teak repair here. This is one that we've I just finished out here. That's $8.95. That's the cost of the wood, the wood shop to cut them all out, the wood bungs, the stainless steel screws, uh, sandpaper and all of that. Now outstanding items, the top of the list here is rigging. 
Now I did update that. I got a uh, estimate from the yard for uh, materials, and that was 5,300, and that's reflected in that uh, $7,137 amount there. Mass step, I still have that at $100. The yard has started. Uh, fabrication on that so I don't have a price yet engine work that's still outstanding uh, the new instruments um, hopefully that should be pretty close to the final uh, amount on that as I start uh, firing them up and seeing what's working and what isn't I'll know more on that the solar hot water heater outstanding item um, that should be close to what it's going to take to finish because I've got everything installed and I've got the water lines inside the boat so I just need to route them to the hot water heater in there and plumb it in. And I believe all the fittings are with that. So I don't expect any changes on that. Uh, the wind turbine, I believe everything is installed on that. Um, I just got to uh, get the mass in and get the wiring hooked up. So I'm not expecting any uh, changes on that. Uh, yard fees and labor, uh, that's always ongoing, so as I get more items on that, I'll update that. Uh, the SSB antenna, 425, um, I don't have to put that on this time, but I like to get that mounted when I put the mast up. That's 425. Um, don't think there'll be any changes in that. And the water turbine, uh, that's a 586. That's for the amount of the water turbine. But I still have to get three mounting brackets uh, made by my machinist so I can get that pole mounted on the stern of the boat. So I don't have any kind of idea what those are going to cost, but we'll see what that happens. So with that said, uh, we have outstanding budget items of $6,276. Items completed $17,332. With no changes uh, for this haul out and refit, the final cost on that would be thirty-two thousand one hundred and six dollars. Uh, when I get some more significant updates, I'll give you guys uh, an update at that time. So, hey, appreciate everybody watching the channel, and if you're watching for the first time, remember to hit that subscription button. Also, I'd like to thank everybody here for getting us to fifty episodes. Thanks a lot, and have a good day.